One thing I am surprised that none of you have mentioned, and I, I thought this was going to be the thing that started the firestorm, and instead you've talked about so many other things that it's been interesting. It shows that sometimes I'm not the best judge of what is going to be the nitpick. The nitpick was, that I thought you were going to jump on was Dogs and Cameron. Maybe you all went back to the tapes and DVDs and show, saw that how I described it was how it was. But part of the thing that I thought makes the T0Ks special, you know, as I described several episodes ago, that their skin is truly cybernetic skin, cyborg skin. It's part of them. It creates the sufficient camouflage that they can get past the dogs. But it only creates a camouflage provided that their terminatoriness can't be detected. That means it's best when their skin isn't broken. If their skin is broken, it better just be a scrape because if it goes all the way down to the endoskeleton, the dogs are going to bark like crazy. Okay, now, P I thought people were going to say, but barks, dogs have been barking all over the place when Cameron's around. And dogs have been barking, but very frequently, that's when there's another Terminator around. Different model. They detect those. The specific scenes where dogs barked at Cameron in her presence, where in Noti uh, Know Thyself, the second episode, when they went into Carlos's lair and the pit bulls barked at Cameron, but she had a small wound up here. I didn't say it would be a big wound, but it was enough. The dogs could detect her. And also, um, let's see, where else? Alpine Fields always comes to mind as the exception that proved the rule I was trying to make. At the very beginning, when they first, when Cameron and Sarah first stumble upon the fields, there is a scene where eventually Barkley the dog starts barking. But Barkley isn't standing in a doorway. He's well inside the room, near a desk, a room that Cameron has been in all of this time. And we haven't heard Barkley bark once. Not until they start leaving and presumably the other Terminator has come within range for Barkley to detect. Now I recognize that this is probably just supposed to be a gag um, uh, for the writers. But it's canon. Barkley didn't bark in the room with Allison there, Cameron there, until towards the end. Then, of course, Barkley barked later, but Cameron had already been shot and tossed through windows and all of that. So, again, exposed endoskeleton. Just about every other time that dogs have been barking, that I recall, has been in the background. We don't see what the dogs are barking at. Because honestly, if you, I opened my window, if you waited 15 minutes, at some point, you'd hear dogs barking. Amazingly enough, I don't think that means a Terminator is in the neighborhood. Dogs bark. So if I couldn't see what the dog was barking at, I wasn't going to worry about it. So I molded that into Cameron's special skin so she can infiltrate a human base with dogs provided she's undamaged externally. 
and presumably doesn't squeak inside. Which kind of brings up um, the evolution of terminators. You, know, you have to kind of specify what makes each model, succeeding model, better than the previous one. Because we have our T600s, which are really bulky, sort of primitive endoskeletons with a rubber skin on top. You can spot those easy. So we get the T800s, which have an organic covering. But as we learned in Terminator 1, the T800s have a nasty tendency to start smelling. We get this from the hotel scene when the superintendent yells about somebody having a dead cat in there. Also, uh, while they may be able to heal, I don't think they heal very quickly. I mean, it's not like uh, Uncle Bob had a lot of time to heal in Terminator 2, so it's hard to really judge. I think he healed a little. But, you know, nobody mentioned whether he smelled or not. Maybe he was putrefying. I mean, he could keep up the outward appearance, but he'd start smelling like a dead guy or a homeless guy or something. Um, I don't think, from my point of view, for the canon that I'm using for this series, I'm saying the 800 series has only a temporary outer covering. They can keep it going for a little bit, not too long. The 850s do better. The 850s have a problem, though. They have those nasty high explosive fuel cells which are really good in a pinch if you need a really big mushroom cloud but kind of make them a liability i think their skin is probably a little bit better than the 800s but not by a lot this brings up to the triple eights the t888s much better skin skin that they can maintain which allows them to seal themselves. I have to wipe my nose again, I'm sorry. <sighs> Allergies. Which allows them to seal themselves up into fallout bunkers or into walls of hotels on Pico Avenue for years at a time. How can you do this, you ask? They didn't all have boxes set up like Cameron did in her vault. No, they didn't. I speculated that, and am using as my justification, that they do have a storage area within their endoskeleton to store the materials they need to maintain their organic covering when they're in standby mode. Because since they can maintain their organic covering, and this is the first Terminator that has this ability, they can gather up those amino acids or proteins or sugars or whatever they need, store them inside, and use them as needed to maintain. So why did Cameron have to be attached to the box? The reason she was attached was because she didn't have that store. I mean, yeah, she eats from time to time. We presume that's how she gets her organic compounds and maintains her skin. But since she has no expectation of having to go into standby mode, she isn't storing that quantity of material. So in anticipation that an endoskeleton would be in that situation, whether it be Cameron or John Henry or whatever, Weaver created the device that allows an endoskeleton, a cyborg, to be hooked up to it, no, no matter what model. Uh, presumably this would even work a little bit on an 850, but certainly a 888 will preserve it. But Weaver knows of T0Ks, so she also included the blue goo. The blue goo, I'm kind of assuming, has a little bit of coltan in it, and all the other vitamins and minerals a healthy cyborg needs to grow.